Today we are starting 6.2 exponential functions. The first section only dealt with growth and decay, and it dealt with the growth formula, the A times 1 plus R to the T power. Yeah. Exponential function. F of X equals B of X, or B to the X. D is the base, and it is always going to be a positive real number. Well, it doesn't have to be, but for right now. X is the exponent and is any real number. We're going to graph f of x equals 2 to the x. We're just going to pick some points. Uh, let's go negative 2. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Two to the negative second power. The first one. Two to the negative second actually means one over two squared, which is one fourth. If it's negative exponent, it belongs on the opposite side. If it's on the top, it belongs on the bottom. Just squared. Two to the negative first means one over two to the first, which is just one half. Two to the zeros, one. Anything to the zero power is one. 2 to the first is 2. 2 squared is 4. Now, just so you see, if I did 3, 2 to the third is 8. Yeah, 2 to the negative third would be 1 eighth. That's pretty much what it is. It's the reciprocals of the positives. That's what they are. When I graph this, for negative 2, how much do I go up? 1 fourth. So it's just above the 0. At negative 1, it's in between 0 and 1. At 0, it's 1. At 1, it's 2. At 2, it's 4. And then 3 is 8. What's happening? They're going... Exponential, yeah. This is exponential. It gets really, really, really small here. Will it ever hit zero? It will never hit zero because if I had 2 to the, give me a really, really, really big negative number. Negative 54,000. It says zero, but there's a reason why my calculator. No. Right. You shouldn't. <laughs> it's 
not zero. You want me to do it? You know what? You're gonna get the same thing. It should give. It should give it to you in scientific. All right. Nope. It never, it's, it's actually too small for the calculator to figure it out. That's why. Let's try the 54. There we go. E to the negative. It's really, 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 really small. I picked too large of a number. I thought the calculator would at least put like E to the negative 100,000. It is. No. That's what it's. It doesn't reach zero. It gets really, really close, but it never does hit zero. Times 10 to the negative 17th. So you have to move it 17 decimal places to the left. How many decimal places do you want? I want you to graph this one and see what happens. All right, when you make your table, x, f of x, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. What happens for one half of the negative third? It becomes 8. It's the flip of it. So, right, and this would be 4, 2, 1, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth. The, what it was for this one. Because what you really have is 1 half to the negative third. The negative third says it belongs on the top, so it's 2 to the third, which is 8. When I graph this one, 1, 2, 3, 8. 2, 4. 1, 2, 1. Indian Low, report to the library. So this looks. Indian Low, report to the library at this time. What can you tell me? So what do you know? Okay. When it's less than one, it's a decreasing. So if you have a fraction less than one, it is decreasing. If I have a number greater than one, it is an increasing exponential. Now, when I said about the whole negative aspect, now I can graph this. 2 to the x. That's the first one. I graph. That's what it shows. I can change it so it's the 1 half. And when I graph. There's my graph. Now I can also go second graph, and there's my table. The only thing about the table, it gives you everything as a decimal. Now originally I said it had to be positive, right? If it's negative, and I hit graph. Nothing showed up. Second graph. What do you notice? It is zero. Look at my numbers. It goes positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. It's not exponential. For exponential, for these problems, it has to be positive. Yeah. Right. It would be, all right, at zero, it's one. Then it goes negative 2, then it goes to positive, then it'd be negative. It's going to be like up and down, up and down. It's not exponentials. 
exponentials have to look like this. So it always has to be a whole number, whether it be greater than 1 or less than 1. Now, for growth and decay, we already talked about this, right? Before, we already know that if the inside, remember we had A equals P times 1 plus R to the T. This right here, if it was greater than 1, meaning growth, if it was less than 1, that's when we had decay, and it was always 100 minus that percent. No, that's, it's just rephrasing what we did before. It's tying the two together. If, of, if f of x equals 2x, we're going to graph 3 times that and 1 half times the negative of that. Yeah, we just did the top one. The top one is our first graph. I want you to look at what happens if I multiply it by 3 or I cut it in half and change the sign. Now you can use graph paper. All right, going over this. All right, for the first graph, here's the original one. The original one was 2 to the x. There's the graph. Now, if I take this and do 3 times 2 to the x, what happens? What happened to your numbers? It tripled the numbers. So I'll look at the graph. What happens to my graph? It's bigger, faster. It's 3 times bigger. If I look at my... Right. So originally at negative 3, you had 1 eighth. Now it's 3 eighths. At negative 2, it's 1 fourth. Now it's 3 fourths. At negative 1, it was a half. Now it's 3 halves. At 0, it's 1, but now it's 3. It's 3 times faster. Yeah, you can make a table just by doing this, too. Second graph. My thing is wrong. Now the next, for this here, this is one half. Actually, that's what I'm going to do. 1 half times, now this one's different in the calculator. I'm not going to put, I can put 2 to the negative x. 2 different things. I showed you what happens if I put the negative on the 2. This tells me everywhere I see an x, I need to put a negative x. If I graph that, there's the original. There's the second one. Why is it this way? Because of the half. It made it go the other way. Now, if I... Right. All right, let me do the chart. I'll do it by hand. You had your original one. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. This was 1 eighth, 1 fourth, 1 half, 
one, two, four, eight. That's the original one. Okay? For this, I'm just showing you. For the second one, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. What this means is I am taking one half times f to the negative x. So instead of using negative 3, I now use positive 3. So 2 to the third which gives me 4. Right. I'm using this because that's, that's my f of x. So this is f of negative x. So instead of using negative 3, I now use positive 3. That's 4. Because we'd use the negative right here. That's why. So then I do the exact same thing. But negative 2 now becomes positive 2. This gets me 2. So when was a right, when it was... No, that was just because it was f of negative x. If this was f of x, it would just be the negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. This one's going to be 1. Are you sure? <laughs> f of... Okay, at zero, it's half, because two to the zero is one times one half. So that's one half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, which in my chart, four to one point five point two five. There you go. Calculator puts them as decimals, not as fractions. Yeah, you can use the calculator. Compound interest formula. A of T equals P times the quantity of 1 plus R divided by N to the NT power. Right, it's just like the other one. This is compound interest. There's two different types of interest. There's simple interest and compound interest. It's not plus or minus. Because if we're talking about, we use this in money a lot. The basic one is I equals PRT. That will tell you just basic interest, how much you make. Like if I, if I said you're going to put $100 in the bank, for a year and you get 6% interest. How much do you get in interest? Six dollars. But what compound interest is saying is that six dollars is getting put back into the problem. So for year two, how much money is in there? There's hundred and six dollars in there. Then do another extra six percent. Take that money, put it back in. P is the principal original amount. R is the annual interest rate. N is the number of times the interest is compounded per year. Sometimes you hear things, it's compounded quarterly. What does quarterly mean? Every three months. T is the amount of time in years. You invest $250 of your money right now at a rate of 5.5% per year, which is really good percent. How much do you have when you graduate high school? How about when you graduate a four-year college or when you are 30 years old? How long is it pretty much for everyone in here to graduate high school? Well, for you, it's going to be two more years. Okay. For the most part. I know everyone's at a different... Okay. No, most are two. 
Now, in college, how long is it going to take you to graduate college? Well, four years, so it's going to take you, it's going to be six years till you graduate college. On average, how old are you, or how many years is it going to be until you're 30? 14. It's not everyone. It's 14, 15, 13. I'll just take the middle. Now, this is compounded yearly. So I have A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the N T. What? Okay, A of T. It's so A of 2. How much do I start off with? 250. 1 plus, actually I can just write 1 plus, what's my rate? 5.5%, so how do I write it? 0 0.055. Now, it's actually divided by 1. Why is it divided by 1? N stands for how many times per year. And this is only happening yearly. So it's technically 1 times 2. Because it's 2 years. For high school, it's 2 years. We'll do it again for. T is your time. So 250, 1.055. You could do one, but you're going to get a different answer from us. I just put 1.055 because it's 1 plus that to the second power because 1 times 2. So in two years, you will have $278.26. That's only on 250 bucks. The more you put in, the more you return you get. The longer it stays in there, the more money you make. So let's see after college. So it's 250 1.055, now it's a 6. Instead of having to retype everything, what can I do? Second, enter. You know the number um, that after the A for the first one? Uh-huh. That's always going to be the same as the one at the end? Now my time is 6, for 6 years. So after 6 years, you will have $344.71. Right here. 1 plus 0 0.055. I just add it together. It, we would take it divided by 2, yeah. It'd be different. It would be this number divided by 2. A of 14. So once you turn 30, 250, 30. I put in 30. Or not 30, sorry. 14, I messed up. All right. A second. Enter change this to a 14. So if I didn't touch this money at all, I just left it in there. When I turn 30, there is now... No, it's... It's still more than what you had before. That is correct. But that's leaving money in there. You're not touching it. You only started with 250 I know it's only 14 years. You might put more money in there. Right. Let's say, I've got to see what my next example is. This is real 